depths of our heart tonight.
And good morning to each and every one of you. I greet you all this Sunday morning, this Sunday being Christian Education Sunday. Today, the regional Sunday school involving both the students and teachers will be leading in worship this morning. Psalm 95 verses 1 to 2 says, Oh come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. We bow our heads in prayer. Let us just pray. At the invitation of Christ, we come, dear Father, to wait before your throne. We stand here, not in our own righteousness, but clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. We have received your grace and our hearts are warmed by your Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name, O God, and blessed be this time of worship. Amen. This morning, we blend our voices in song as we sing the hymn, Come Now is the Time to Worship. And we have Miss Kareen Mitchell leading us in this song. Choose you. 
this time, you'll be led in prayer by Miss Candice Gobin, and this will be followed by a song, This Little Light of Mine, and Miss Jessica will lead us in this song. So at this point in time, we bow our heads in prayer for the prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give thanks to you for the many ways you show us the riches of your glorious inheritance. You can open, you, you open our eyes each morning to the beauty of the sunrise, the promise of a new day with the opportunity to love and be loved. The flame of the Holy Spirit burns within us, encouraging us to nurture and serve others, letting our hearts and soul find new ways of being good and faithful disciples. You remind us that we are not solitary people, but live in communication with you, working with you, our Lord and Master, to build up the body of Christ. We celebrate the blessings you bring to us and the knowledge that your love knows no bound. Through you, we become a new creation. We know that when we listen to your word and do as you have commanded, we are rewarded in ways that bring glory to your holy name. May all glory and majesty be given unto you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, now and forevermore. Amen. be merciful to me. On thy grace I rest my plea. In thy vast abounding grace my transgressions all erase. Wash me wholly from my sin. Cleanse from every ill within. At this time we'll be led in prayer by Adam. Our prayer of confession. Let us confess our sins before God. Good morning everyone. Let's let us clasp our hands together and bow our heads as we confess our many sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 26, 
verses 12 to 18. And this will be read to us by Delisha, which will be followed by the song, Can a Little Child Like Me? And Miss Abigail will lead us in that singing. So at this point in time, let us listen to the word of God. Good morning. The scripture reading is taken from Acts, Acts 26, verses 12 to 18. This portion of reading is entitled, Paul Tells of His Conviction. It was for the purpose that I went to Damascus with authority and orders from the chief priests. It was on the road at midday, Your Majesty, that I saw a light much brighter than the sun coming from the sky and shining around me and the men traveling with me. All of us fell to the ground, and I heard a voice say to me in Hebrew, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You are hurting yourself by hitting back like an ox kicking against its owner's stick. Who are you, Lord? I asked, and the Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you persecuted. By, but get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as my servant. You are to tell others what you have seen of me today and what I will show you in the future. I will rescue you from the people of Israel and from the Gentiles whom I will send you. You are to open their eyes and turn them from the darkness to the light and from the power of Satan to God, so that through their faith in me they will have their sins forgiven and receive their place amongst God's chosen people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy and precious word. Amen. Precious Father, as we bow before thy throne today, we count the many blessings thou hast showered upon our way. At this time, we'll be led in the prayer of thanksgiving by Miss Maya Das. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of all source of love, we come before you today, not asking for anything, but humbly giving thanks for all you have done for us. Lord, we say thank you for waking us up this glorious morning. We thank you for the many blessings we enjoy from your hands, for the joys of life, for food and shelter, for health and strength, 
and for the love of family and friends. Above all, we say thank you for sending your son to die on that old rugged cross to redeem us from our sins and to help us see afresh your way and your purpose. Thank you, O God, for the gift of life and thank you for the privilege of living it. Father, grant us continued graces and blessings throughout the coming year. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, bringing us today's announcements will be the clerk of session, Mr. Karamchal Mitchell. So at this point in time, we'll have the announcements, which will be followed by some choruses. And we will be led in the choruses by, you know, we normally say the Badri's family. So we have, we have Miss Stacy, Samara, and Sahara leading us with the choruses following the announcements. Let us listen to the announcements as it pertains to the work and witness of our church. Good morning, Christian friends. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Barakpo Pastoral Region and the Sunday School teachers and students welcome you all as we worship together on this Christian Education Sunday. Thank you all very much for sharing. Just a few reminders. Please join with the Board of Christian Education this afternoon at 4 p.m. to their National Christian Education Service via Zoom or YouTube. The link will be sent shortly. There will be no regional Sunday school this afternoon because of the service. So please join the above service. VBS for the region, the Barapur region, starts on Monday, the 19th of July at 9 a.m. Parents and students and teachers, you are all invited to join in this period of fellowship as we learn together. The Board of Men invite you to the National Convention, which will be on the Saturday, the 31st of July, starting at 9 at 9 to 11 a.m. via Zoom and YouTube. The National Youth Camp starts on August 8th to the 13th. You can register online through Boya Board of Youth Affairs. Just some programs that are available for us through St. Andrew's Theological College, Christian Education Leadership and Project Management. There is a program starting on Friday, the 23rd of July, 8 p.m. You can join in the discussion via Zoom. The link is on our website. Uh, new Courses Certificate in Youth Ministry. It starts on September 18th. It's a six weeks course at $500. All interested person, you can register online to pursue this course. Please have a pleasant week and stay safe. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Saraya. And I'm Samara. Let us join as we sing some choruses to praise the Lord. <laughs>
Indeed, we are blessed. And as we prepare to listen to this morning's message, which is entitled Living for Jesus. I know we are all ready. Yes, we have been equipped. So at this point in time, I'll invite Mr. Nicholas Mitchell to bring us God's message. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> as we prepare to meditate on the theme, Living for Jesus, I invite you all to pray. Let us pray. The prophet Isaiah wrote, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. God of wisdom, we sometimes find understanding the Bible to be difficult. We know you want us to apply your word in our lives. We thank you for giving us your word so we can grow in our relationship with you. Help us to grasp what you want us to know as I proclaim your word here this morning. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning is taken from Acts chapter 26, verses 12 to 18. In the King James Version of the Bible, this portion of scripture is entitled, Paul Tells of His Conversion. According to Acts chapter 26, this portion of scripture is one of five speeches Paul made in his defense to King Agrippa. As we read Acts chapter 26, we may ask ourselves, why did Paul have to defend himself? And who is King Agrippa? King Agrippa is also known as King Agrippa II. He was the great grandson of King Herod. And we all know who King Herod is. That is the king who tried to kill baby Jesus. King Agrippa was made king of a small territory in Lebanon village and was later given territory of certain, of certain cities of Galilee as well. He was considered an authority of Jewish affairs, Jewish scriptures, and Jewish conflicts. Therefore, Rome appointed him as the curator of the temple, which meant he had the authority to appoint high priests and was also in charge of the temple treasury. But why was Paul brought before King Agrippa? Paul was preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ, and this was not liked by the Jewish people. Therefore, Paul was made to defend himself and the gospel. Many charges have been brought before Paul by the Jewish people, including the charges that he was against the law, against the temple, and against Caesar. Paul was in prison in Caesarea so that he could be on, tri on trial for these charges. But the truth is, none of these charges were ever proven. Paul was innocent of these charges, yet because of politics, the Roman governors, Felix and Festus, did not release him. When thinking about our theme today, living for Jesus, and reflecting on Acts chapter 26, we can make the connection that Paul was falsely accused and arrested because after his conversion on the road to Damascus, Paul was living for Jesus. He was teaching, preaching, and making people aware of Jesus Christ and his works. Here we, here we are seeing that sometimes it may be challenging or we may be persecuted because we are living for Jesus. But like Paul, even in despair, we should never give up. When Paul realized that he was not receiving justice at the hands of the governors, Felix and Festus, he appealed as a Roman citizen to Caesar Nero for an opportunity to defend himself in the courts of Caesar. According to Acts chapter 25, King Agrippa and his sister, Queen Bernice, came to pay the new governor, Festus, a visit in Caesarea. While they were there, Festus consulted with King Agrippa as to what he should write on the charge sheet to be sent to Rome with Paul. When King Agrippa heard that Paul was there, he requested that Paul be brought before him to make his case. So now we know who is King Agrippa. 
And now we know why did Paul have to defend himself? Focusing on today's scripture selection of Acts chapter 26, verses 12 to 18, Paul explained his conversion to King Agrippa. We can also read about the details and the reason for Paul's conversion when we also read Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 19. From both Acts 26, 12 to 18, and Acts 9, 1 to 19, we can see that Paul was made a Christian by divine power, by a revelation of Christ both to him and in him when in a full career of his sin. He was made a master by divine authority. The same Jesus who appeared to him in that glorious light ordered him to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. He was instructed to teach the Gentiles so that they may be turned from the power of Satan unto God. The forgiveness of sin makes way for this. You see, no one can be happy if they are not holy. And to be saints in heaven, we must first do good while on earth. We are made holy and saved by faith in Christ. The cross of Christ was a stumbling block to the Jews, and they were in a rage at Paul's preaching of the fulfillment of Old Testament predictions. It was foretold by the prophets that the Gentiles should be brought to the knowledge of God by the Messiah. So as mentioned before in the Bible passage, Acts chapter 26, verse 12 to 18, the apostle Paul tells King Agrippa about his conversion experience on the road to Damascus. Paul explains that when he had fallen on the ground, the Lord told him to get up and stand on your feet. The Lord made Paul a delegate and a witness of what he had seen and also of what God would show, would show him in the future. So as we reflect on Paul's experience, both on the road to Damascus and both to his explanation to King Agrippa and our portion of scripture for today, we think about our lives and what it means to live for Jesus today. Paul's experience gave us four clear examples. The first being, the Lord tells us through scripture and through Paul's experience that when we live for Christ, we are commanded to get up from where we are and to stand firm and secure. Our minds, hearts, souls, and bodies are where we start recognizing that the Lord has made us and the Lord commands us to adopt an attitude that is ready for action in this world. And we ask ourselves the question, what does God's action in this world mean for us today? We have our own experiences we can relate to. So therefore, we will have different answers for this question. Secondly, the Lord delegates us. We are called to be ambassadors ambassadors for Christ, as highlighted in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. We are emissaries of the kingdom of heaven on earth. We live according to the ways of Christ, not the ways of the world. So I ask the question, what does it mean to be an ambassador? And ambassador in this context means an ambassador for Christ. The answer, as mentioned before, is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. We are to speak for Christ as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf. Thirdly, we need to reflect on our own experiences. And to do this, we need to ask ourselves the question, what have we seen? Think about the amazing things that the Lord has done for us. In our ordinary and extraordinary experiences, the Lord gives us his calling, the strength, and the grace to change our lives and to live for him. Our experiences and our faith can be used as examples to teach people about the goodness of God. Our experiences can be used to live for Jesus. There are those 
who are not yet aware of God and Christ. Let me repeat, there are those who are not yet aware of God and Christ. They may have not yet had their experience to develop or nurture their faith. It is up to us who have already experienced God's goodness and grace to tell and to show those who have not yet had their experience. And through you, your experiences and exposure to God's word will their faith be developed. Fourthly, the Lord tells us that what we have experienced in the past and what we are doing now are just a start. We are continuing witnesses of the Lord's work in our lives. We live for Jesus Christ by showing the spiritual results of our ongoing experiences in our daily existence. This brings me to the question, what are our experiences and how do we show God's results? These are two questions only you can answer. Because as mentioned before, each and every one of us have our own experiences with God and Christ that has developed our faith, or else we would not have been here. We would, have, we would, we would not have been making the sacrifice to join Zoom sessions and stuff with the closure of church. So each and every one of us have our own experience that we can share, we can use as an example to teach about Christ, to prove to people that yes, God really do exist. Because the Lord has only just begun with us. Our experiences are only just the beginning. So as I close, for every one of us, living for Jesus will mean something different. It is important to remember that living for Jesus it's not about following some regulation, but it is accepting a completely new identity. We are different people. We think, we speak, and behave differently because we do not live for ourselves and our own selfish obsessions. Our aspirations are the aims of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, our head, our heart, our hands and feet are those of the Lord in this world. And this is what it means to live for Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Nicholas. At this time, we'll be led in our pastoral prayer by Michelle. After which, Jada will lead us in the singing of I am walking on my way to the Lord. So at this point in time, we um, bow our heads in prayer for the pastoral prayer, which will be followed by I'm walking on my way to the Lord. Welcome to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your word proclaimed here this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word. We pray that your word will continue to take control of us. We pray that your word will lead us onward and help us to live our life for Christ. As we continue in prayer, we lift up our country. We pray that you will protect our people from this COVID virus. Help those who have contracted this virus to recover and be healed. We pray for those families who have been affected by the virus, which resulted in the death of loved ones. We pray that you give these families strength during their time of trouble. We pray for those who have lost their jobs. Help them, Lord, as they try to find ways to take care of their loved ones. We pray for all the people that make up the labor force of our country. Watch over them and protect them as they carry out their duties. We pray for all the workers in the Ministry of Health as they continue being our essential and frontline workers. We pray for the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago and by extension the Barapur Pastoral Region. 
We pray for all the churches in our region. We pray for the local boards and the various groups and all the members of the pastoral region. Lord, if there is anyone who is ill, we ask that you touch them with your great healing hand. For those who may be experiencing any difficulties or problems, we lift them up to you. We ask that you carry them and lead them to the path of progress and prosperity and happiness. All, them, all these mercies we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say as we pray the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm walking on my way to the Lord, to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. I'm walking on my way to the Lord, to my Lord who's waiting there for me. So let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. So let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord who's waiting there for me. I'm singing on my way to the Lord. To my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. I'm singing on my way to the Lord. To my Lord who's waiting there for me. So let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord, Lord. Lord, to my Lord's house, so let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord who's waiting there for me. I'm dancing on my way to the Lord, to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. I'm dancing on my way to the Lord, to my Lord who's waiting there for me. So let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord, 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 go my Lord's house. Let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord who's waiting there for me. I'm clapping on my way to the Lord. To my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. I'm clapping on my way to the Lord. To my Lord who's waiting there for me. So let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. So let's all join hands and praise the Lord. Go to my Lord who's waiting there for me. Indeed, we are blessed this morning to have both our minister, Reverend Manandale, and presiding elder, Mr. William Gokul, participating in the service. So at this time, I'll ask our Rev, Reverend Dale to just bring us a few words, after which presiding elder, Mr. William Gokul, will pronounce the benediction. So let's listen to our Rev at this point in time. Good morning, my dear friends. I feel very proud this morning as Minister of the Barakwa Pastoral Region, having experienced this worship for the last hour or so. I want to thank Cynthia and other members of our regional Sunday school team for leading us in this worship this morning. Um, I have tried, you know, um, in the last few months in particular to develop, to ensure that we have um, we develop our leadership potential in our region. And today, I see that coming to the fore in the way that we have brought together our young people, our, our children in particular, 
to share in the service, the ambience, the environment that they bring in the service, very serious in the spirit of true worship to Almighty God. And so today, as I, as I was part of the service, I, was re I felt really blessed by the beautiful singing, the reading, the prayers, the deep thoughts that went into all of it and the preparation. And I must say to Barakwa Pastoral Region this morning, congratulations. You know, you have done well and you are, there's a great potential in every single one of you. Today, I want to say special thanks also to, to Nicholas for agreeing to bring us our message today. And like a true teacher, he has, there are many lessons that he has brought us and this, the, the, the structure of his sermon this morning, there's so much that we could learn from it. From it. And I want to encourage him and all of you to continue the work that you are doing. Let us recognize that all that you do, all that you have done today, and that all that you will continue to do is part of living for Jesus. It is the most important thing that you will do in your life because there's an end result for all of it. You're not doing it for, for any kind of credit for today alone, for any kind of outcome or any kind of um, any reward for today alone, you are storing up for yourselves by what you are doing and what you have done today, rewards for yourself in that most beautiful place in heaven where Jesus, with Jesus, where we will see Jesus face to face. So as young people and as older persons today, I really congratulate you, I commend you, and I feel very proud about Barak for this morning. And I know that there is so much more, so much more that we have to offer for those who were not able to be part of our service this morning. So Cynthia and your team, praise God for you. Thank you very much and continue to do the great work that you have been doing on behalf of the pastoral region. May God bless us all as I hand over now to Mr. Gopul. Thank you very much, Rev. I would like to endorse all that the Reverend have said that I sat here and I listened to his service. Personally, I felt very blessed and uplifted by the work of our youths and teachers in the region. I invite you now to bow with me in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you have blessed us with so many talents in our small region. That this morning we have shared some of that talent where we have brought to the fore our singing, our prayers, our reading, and the message this morning that was brought to us. Lord, we thank you for all that you have bestowed upon us. And we pray, O oh God, that your spirit would continue to move among us and motivate us that we would always be willing to live for you. And as we continue living for you, let us remember to be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. And now, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you all. And this morning, just before we leave, right, and I'm going to be putting our reverend on the spot here. Rev, I'd just like you to offer a word of prayer to the Noyan family. Now, most of us, you know, we know the family from Lower Barako, and one of the girls, she would have passed away yesterday in that accident, Rihanna. Yes, so we know that whenever we have our bonfire or any activity, they will normally come and, you know, participate as members of the Lower Barako Presbyterian Church. 
So we know it's from the Presbyterian family that they are hurting, but as a church, as a national church, indeed we are all, you know, we extend our sympathies to the family. So at this point in time, I just ask Rev to lead us in a word of prayer as we pray for that family this morning. Praise God, let us unite our hearts. Father, our hearts are crying out to you this morning as a sister, a child of yours has passed, O oh Lord, in tragic circumstances. And today, Lord, our pastoral region, who have been blessed by her in the past, O oh Lord, they are weeping and they are crying and they are reaching out to you, some of them seeking answers. But God, we ask you this morning that you will be with that family first of all as they grieve lord grieve with them be with them hold their hands surround them by the blood of jesus and oh god we pray for the soul of rianne for all the work that she did for you lord for all the treasures that she stored up in heaven for all the ways that she lived for jesus christ in this world where, as you place her lord with all her talents oh god we pray, O oh Lord, that, that those talents and that work, O oh Lord, which she did would not be in vain, O oh Lord, but you would receive her. You would receive her as a soul that has done its work in this world. Father, today we pray for all our people who have known Rian, and we ask you to bless them and give them comfort in their grief and walk with them and hold their hands and give them answers, O oh Father about life and about death and about eternity. God, we, live, we leave these families and we leave the soul of Rian into your hands, O oh Lord. For you are the great comforter, you are the great physician, you are the great healer and restorer, Lord. Restore the hearts of your people and receive your servant that she may find eternal rest in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Rev. So thanks again to all of you and please be safe. Have a blessed week. Thank you all very much for sharing and being part of this this, this morning. Well done, Ms. Cynthia, all the participants. Well done. God bless Thank us you. all. Thank you. Thanks to our technical team for putting a good program together. Oh, yes, a seamless presentation. Thank you, Sally.